Welcome to Culture Alley Mandarin. Ni hao. This is Basic Mandarin Lesson 14. Let's start by going over some of the phrases that you learned in the last lesson. The measure word for flat objects is zhang, while that for people or for general use is ge. This will be zhe. And that becomes na. The measure word for stick like objects is zhi, whereas the measure word for volume is bun. Great! Now let's take a look at the phrases we learned throughout the last lesson. One photo translates to yi zhang zhao pian. And a piece of paper becomes yi zhang zhi. One boy becomes yi ge nan hai zi. While a school bag translates to yi ge shu bao. This photo will become zhi zhang zhao pian. Whereas that boy translates to na ge nan hai zi. Similarly, this is a pen becomes zhe shi zhi bi. And this is not a pencil becomes zhe bu shi zhi qian bi. Lastly, that is not a dictionary is translated as na bu shi ben zi tian. And that is a book becomes na shi ben shu. Great! Now let's take a look at today's lesson. Today we will cover basic question formation and negations. Today we will explore how questions are formed in Mandarin and learn a new form of negation that will help us cover verbs. Let's start with question formation. We will start by learning how a question formed in Mandarin is different from one formed in English, and for this, we'll have to learn some new vocabulary. So let's begin. Who translates to she, which is pronounced with a mid rising tone. Let's hear you say she. Great, let's move on. Here's something you need to keep in mind while forming questions in Mandarin. Unlike English, Mandarin supplies the interrogative word where the answer should be. Let's compare English and Mandarin to see what we find. Here is how we ask about someone in English. Who is he? He is Mark. Note that in English, the interrogative comes in the beginning of the question but the answer comes at the end of the statement. If the same were to be asked in Mandarin, here's how the conversation would go. Ta shi she. He is who? Ta shi Mark. He is Mark. Thus in Mandarin, the interrogative comes exactly where the answer comes. Let's look at a few more examples to get the concept right. Let's start with the phrase to have. To have translates to yo and is pronounced with a falling, rising tone. Let's hear you say yo. Good. Let's see how we can say who has a younger sister in Mandarin. Here's the breakup. Who becomes she has becomes Yo, and younger sister translates as mei mei. Thus, who has a younger sister is translated as she yo mei mei. That literally means who have younger sister. An answer to the above question can be li has a younger sister, which becomes li yo mei mei. 
in Mandarin, literally meaning Li have younger sister. Similarly, who is he translates to Ta Shi She, literally meaning he is who. So remember that, unlike English, Mandarin supplies the interrogative where the answer should be. Hence, in Mandarin, the translation for who is he will be reordered to he is who, as we will place the answer at the end of the question, he is Mark. Thus, who is he translates to ta shi she, literally meaning he is who, and he is Dr. Wong is translated as ta shi Wong yi sheng. Please note that in Mandarin, the occupation is said after the name. Good. Let's move on to another question. Whose photo is this? Which literally translates as, this is whose photo in Mandarin. Let's look at the word-by-word -word breakup of the same. This translates as, zhe. Is becomes, shi. Who translates as she. The possessive particle translates as da. And lastly, photo translates as zhao pian. Thus, whose photo is this translates to zhe shi she de zhao pian. Literally meaning this is who possessive photo. In response, this is my photo simply becomes zhe shi wo de zhao pian. All right, it's quiz time now. Let's see if you remember what we've done till now. How do we say who is he in Mandarin? Do we say she ta shi. Is it ta shi she? Or is it yi shi she? The correct way of saying who is he in Mandarin is ta shi she. Here's another one. What does li yo mei mei? Translate to in English. Does it mean that Li is May's younger sister? Or is it that Li is the younger sister? Or does it simply mean that Li has a younger sister? In English, Li Yo Mei Mei translates to Li has a younger sister. Hope you got that one right. Let's move on. So now we know that the interrogative goes where the answer would be. However, the same is not true in case of question particles such as ma, na, etc. That finishes our bit on question formation. Now let's move over to our next topic, which is negations. To start off with, there are two ways of saying no in Mandarin. Let's look at both of them one by one. The most common one is bu, which is pronounced with a falling tone. We're already familiar with this one, so let's see the next one. The second one is mei, pronounced with a mid-rising tone. It is said as mei. The verb to have, also yo, is negated by mei instead of bu. Let's look at some examples. Do you have an elder sister translates to ni yo jie jie ma. That literally means you have elder sister. Similarly, I don't have an elder sister translates as wo mei yo jie jie. Literally meaning, 
I don't have elder sister. Let's look at another one. I have a younger sister becomes 我有一个妹妹. Literally meaning, I have one measure word younger sister. Great! It's quiz time now. Let's see if you recall all that we've learned today. When is may used to say no? Is it used with the verb have? Or is it used with the negation not? Or is it used with the word family? May is used to say no with the verb have or yo. Hope you got that right. What does wo meo jia jia translate to? Does it become I have a younger sister? Or is it I don't have a younger sister? Or the last one, I don't have an elder sister. The correct translation of wo meo jia jia is I don't have an elder sister. Good job! We've covered both the topics of today's lesson. Now let's take a look at all the sentences we've covered today as a conversation. As always, first in English, followed by Mandarin. Who has a younger sister? Lee has a younger sister. Who is he? He is Dr. Wong. Whose photo is this? This is my photo. Do you have an elder sister? I don't have an elder sister. I have a younger sister. Here's how the conversation would go in Mandarin. Shei yo mei mei. Li yo mei mei. Ta shi shei. Ta shi wang yi sheng. Excellent. Let's move on. Let's have another conversation between Mark and Lisa to review what we've covered today. Who is he? He is my father, Dr. Wong. Is she your elder sister? No, I have a younger sister. Now let's hear it in Mandarin. Ta shi shei. Ta shi wo ba ba wang yi sheng. Ta shi ni jie jie ma. Bu, wo you yi ge mei mei. Good job. That finishes our lesson for today. Once again, it's time for our culture leaf. Today, we will talk about traditional dinner practices in China. While visiting a Chinese home for a meal, there are certain cultural customs and norms that one must follow. Here are some suggested behavioral practices while going for an informal dinner. It is considered both polite and appropriate to get a small gift such as a bottle of wine or a tea set. However, make sure to not gift anything in sets of four, as the number four, si, sounds similar to the Mandarin word for death, si. It is considered rude to start eating before everyone is seated at the dinner table. Wait for all the dishes to be laid on the table and served before you start with your first bite. A customary phrase before starting dinner is chi fan, literally meaning eat rice and amounting to let's start the meal. Chi fan is said all around the table before starting a meal. Here you see a photo of a table setting before a Chinese meal. In the next lesson, we will learn about numbers and currencies. We hope you enjoyed your lesson today. See you at the alley for the next one.